50th in the nation. Uh, I think it's child abuse to put a child in the government schools. So welcome to Timelines. Today I have Janine Hansen. She is the candidate for Lieutenant Governor of the great state of Nevada, but she's the independent candidate. And so the Independent American Party is your party. Welcome, Janine. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. So she came in last night to the group city of Reno from out in Elko. Elko, Elko yes. That's it, right? That's a, about four or five hour drive along Highway 80. Uh -huh. Well, thank you for coming in. That's a heck of a place to uh, run a statewide election from. I well, I've been all over the state. I've been to Vegas and Pahrump. I've been to Dayton. Um, last night I spoke here in Sparks. I've been to Reno a couple of times. I have been was in Winnemucca a few weeks ago, so I've been all over the state. Oh, very good. Um, it's, you know, elections are exciting, uh, and a statewide election is even more exciting. So we're going to talk today in timelines. We're going to talk about you and your background. We're going to go right into your life and success principles. Then we're going to really focus um, on your campaign because it's really unique uh, and a little bit of background campaign. So first of all, you've been involved in politics for a long time. You're raised here in Reno. In I was Sparks. born and raised in Sparks and lived uh -huh. here my, my, essentially my whole life until I moved to Elko 13 years ago. Sparks High, Sparks High School, right? I graduated from Sparks High. I attended the University of Nevada at Reno and then I graduated from Brigham Young University. So UNR, what years did you go to UNR? Um, I graduated from high school in 70. I went, uh, I graduated from BYU in 76, so I went in between that. I was at UNR. Right after high school, I went to UNR. Yeah, UNR is a nice school. A lot of uh, well-connected people in the city of Reno and Sparks have gone to UNR, of course. It's one of the top schools in the country now. It's top 100. What did you study at UNR? Oh, I just did my basics there because I was just beginning. Uh-huh. I was there for about two years. And then you went to Brigham Young. And then I went to Brigham Young and finished. That's it, unique. So you went to two full-blown schools. A lot of people go to JC, and then they go to uh, their last two years. How was Brigham Young? I loved it because uh, they had wonderful values there, and uh, that was very, very much what I liked. And also, there were so many opportunities and uh, so many more people. I really loved it. You know, it's close but not close. I always consider us sort of on an island here <laughs> in Washoe County. Uh, Sparks, Reno, Tahoe. It's about two hours to Sacramento, but then the next big city, big city is Salt Lake, of course, and that's eight hours. <laughs> and it's almost all eight hours across the mountainy high desert. Well, actually, now that I live in Elko, uh, it's really farther to come to Reno it's yeah. than it is to go to Salt Lake. It's about three and a half hours to Salt Lake, about four and a half hours to yeah. here. And you get to cross Bonneville Salt Flats. <laughs> Yes. I see some big storms come up <laughs> through there. It's kind of neat. It's neat out there. I've, it's a long drive. Um, that Western states, we have long drives between our cities. Yes. Well, I drive uh, during the legislative session because I stay in Carson City. I drive every week from Elko to Carson. So I'm really used to that. Well, we're going to get into what you do in the legislative and we'll talk about your campaign in the second part. But let's go your life and success principles. So the first is being faithful to the Lord, um, constitutional principles, and family. Those sound excellent. So what does be faithful to the Lord mean and how do you apply that to your life? Um, I think the Lord has a plan for all of us. I think that we just need to find out what it is. And uh, so I have spent a lot of time in my life. Uh, the Lord really set me up to do these things. When I was in high school, I uh, didn't want to be on the debate team, but my drama uh, coach said to me, oh, you don't have to be on the debate team, Janine, but your drama grade depends on it. So three days later, I went to my first debate, and uh, that taught me how to think and how to analyze issues, and it was very important along the track. I also learned to type in high school, and I've written a newsletter every month of my life. So those are very important things for me to learn to do. And, uh, and so as I progressed, uh, my family was very involved in politics, and so I had a, an innate interest in those things and constitutional issues, and it just kind of pulled me into it. The real thing, uh, the, the first thing that really got me involved was when I was a young woman, was the first time I testified at the legislature was on the abortion issue, which I am pro-life. Uh, I was 19 at the time. And then after that, the so-called Equal Rights Amendment came up. And it was uh, very detrimental to women. 
It uh, would transfer, as Senator Irvin said, all uh, legislative authority from the states over school sports, prison regulations, insurance rates, anything that made a difference between men and women, girls and boys, into the hands of the federal courts and the federal bureaucrats. And you know, that's bad because we don't have any control over it then. So I led the fight in Nevada to oppose the so-called Equal Rights Amendment, and we were one of the three states that stopped it. And well, that fits right into your second principles, constitutional principles. Yes. And I assume that when you talk about constitutional principles too, you also link in the concept of government closest to the people is best. That's right. I feel like the Constitution is divinely inspired. So as I am trying to do what the Lord wanted me to do, I always ask what I'm supposed to do. It isn't always what I want to do. Plenty of times I, would, I used to get mad and want to quit this whole thing many times, but I felt that I was drawn back into it by the Lord. So constitutional principles are the bottom line for me. Um, I think they were um, that all of our founding fathers were inspired to bring us those constitutional principles, which are the principles of liberty, of liberty. But we can't have liberty unless we are willing to sacrifice for it, and unless we are real, willing to keep the principles upon which liberty is based. We have to keep those in our lives. Very good. And then finally, your third principle that you live by is family. Yes, family is the basic unit of society. Family was given to us by God. Family is uh, what keeps society together. What's happened in America today, which is so sad because so many people are casualties. The family is really under attack by government and by society. And so we have government trying to solve this problem, spending more and more money, making things worse and worse. And so we need to go back to the basic family principles where family is sacred, where we're taking care of our children, and, that, uh, and those principles of being responsible for family, being responsible to ourselves, being responsible to our children, those families can hold society together. Right now, we see it disintegrating all around us. Well, a little bit about your family, though. You've got four children. I've got four children. And a lot of grandchildren, like 15. 15. <laughs> and three of them are still in Nevada, which is nice. One, three of my children. Yeah. One in Arizona. So they're all fairly close. The closest can be, where, where do they live? Uh, I have two girls in Reno, one son in Elko, and one son in Arizona. You know, one thing about our area, and, and you talk about Reno and Nevada, where I'm from in the Central Valley, we do everything you can to escape, unless you have a farm, almonds or walnuts are hooked to the land. <laughs> then you have to come back for my cousins. But in, in Nevada, a lot of people will, will leave, go to school, and they'll come back. This is where they want to live. Oh, yes. And we, it's a great state. I never wanted to live anywhere else. It really is a nice state. Yes. And uh, one of the things that happened to me is that where I lived in Sparks became essentially unfriendly. Uh -huh. And so we moved to Elko. I grew up in Sparks when it was a small town. Yeah. And now where I live, I live 10 miles out of Elko. It's a small yeah. town. You know, Sparks is Sparks. And it's fine. It's a beautiful town. But it's nothing like California, places I've been in California. <laughs> it's rough. Uh, California is, I mean, our problems are minute compared to California. Oh, I'm sure that's true. But, you know, I always lived in a city, and now I live out on two and a half acres out in the desert, the high desert. I can take my dog and walk, and nobody bothers me. I would never go back to living in the city. I love it there. It's a mining town. It is a mining town and a ranching town, yes. And ranching, of course, ranching, free grazing. Well, it used to be much more of a ranching town, but because of the federal government, the Bureau of Land Management, and, uh, and the Forest Service, they've destroyed most of the ranching in Elko. There's only about 50% left there. Has the monument, we're going to have to finish up here, but has the monument issue affected you, uh, the national monuments? That Not in Elko. Not in Elko. It's down in southern Nevada. Okay, very good. Um, with that, we're going to take a break, and we're going to come back, and we're going to actually go into your campaign and talk more about your campaign and about your uh, background in politics. Really interesting. And, and of course, Nevada is a unique state. It's not it's small enough that we actually can talk to our legislators. That's right. This episode is being made possible by members of the RMC, especially the Life members and the Silver sponsors, to help us produce Timelines Meet the Voter. It's been a heck of a campaign season. We've done a lot of interviews. And again, just want to thank the uh, Silver Sponsors specifically and the Life members. Also, uh, just a reminder, on October the 17th, S Sam Chad 
and Ray Hager are going to be at the RMC for lunch at the Atlantis for an after actions on the election. So we'll see what happens. Okay, we're back after the break with Janine Hansen, who is a candidate for lieutenant governor, great state of Nevada. And I'm going to go back and ask you a couple of questions before we go on and talk about politics. You were in drama when you were in high school. Yes. What do you think? Did that help you out now? I had a wonderful coach, and he's the one that got me into debate, and it was one of the most important things in my life. Because through the debate, I learned, as I said before, how to think, and so I was prepared. When I was a young woman, I thought, oh, I know how to do that. I can speak in public, because uh, he took us to debate tournaments uh, in California, in Arizona, all over the state of Nevada. We actually, our team won the state a debate championship in Nevada That's and right. extemporaneous I won first place so that gave me the confidence uh, and I think that was just the hand of the Lord in my life leading me and preparing me and uh, to be able to do these things so when they asked me to do them then I wasn't intimidated I could go on TV I could go on the radio because I had essentially done these things yeah. in debate I first time I saw you was the RMC's uh, debate forum they had, uh -huh. which Robertson didn't show up. No, he didn't come. <laughs> and we're gonna, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> uh, the four other candidates, Republicans, but he didn't show up. That, but you did a great job. Everyone liked you. Well, I did a lot of research. You know, I, I, uh, at first I thought, gee, why am I running for lieutenant governor? But as I pursued it, I realized after that debate, I knew more than any of they d them did about the issues. Right. So I wasn't intimidated at all because the lieutenant governor actually serves as the president of the Senate. So I've been at the legislature my entire adult life, so I know the issues. You know, that's one of the neatest things, one of the neatest things here. Uh, we, uh, Carson City is just down the street from us. Yeah. And you can go in and watch your legislators, talk to them at small. We're citizen legislators, which is amazing. Every two years, mm -hmm. uh, there's an election, and they only meet once a year, which is really good because then we have fewer yeah. laws. Once every other year. Excuse me, once, er, once every other year. Excuse me, yeah. I meant to say once every other year. But they, um, that's good. It slows down making regulations, laws, and, the integra <laughs> and give you a chance to think and digest and look at things. And, and, and every it, it, session, they yeah. have a bill to make it annual. And we've I've opposed that for many years. We're much better off the way it is. Oh, Texas, absolutely. a much bigger state than ours, only meets every other year. So it's a good system. California, on the other hand, the Assembly and the Senate, they get paid a ton of money. They have a staff, and all they have to do is sit around and make laws all day long. That's crazy. Well, it's, it's bad crazy. enough in Nevada. They had over 13, uh, uh, 1,200 bills introduced last session. So. so let's say somebody wants to do what you're doing and become a citizen legislator uh, when you're not running for office, of citizen course. Citizen lobbyist. Lobbyist, excuse me, citizen lobbyist. What do they have to do? Well, all you have to do is go to the legislature, and the minute you step your foot in the door, you start learning how it happens, and you work on that. What I've done, though, is that I uh, go all over the state and give citizen lobby workshops I'm a, for free. I'm available to do that for any organization, for any group that wants to bring me in. I teach them how from their own home, from their own computer, from their own phone, uh, they can make a difference at the legislature. During the sessions, I usually send out over 150 alerts on specific issues. We started following over 500 bills, and we let ne people know what they can do and if they can send an email, we give them very brief explanation. We give them a link to the bill. We tell them specifically who to contact. And that makes a huge difference because it makes, I mean, everybody's busy. Everybody's got jobs and kids and families. And so we make it easy for them to spend a few minutes and make a difference at the legislature. Very good. So you do have to register though, right? Everyone, if you're everyone, do everyone that's going to be a lobbyist has to register. And it costs, I think, about $15 a year. Uh, is it? For a session. For, for a session. Okay, yes. for every two years then. Yeah. So it's a two-year cycle and you register. Uh -huh. Interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. And they do charge to register. Well, they take your picture, they give you a badge, wow. and you have to wear it all the time in the legislature. One of the best things that happened was that they used to have, of course, all the citizens lobby lobbyists registered, and then they had um, people like me representing. I represent the Nevada Families for Freedom organization, and the Independent American Party. But who di wasn't registered as the largest number of lobbyists are government lobbyists. Okay, Every city, every county, every school district, uh, they all have their own lobbyists, every department of the legislature. So there's more lobbyists representing government 
there than any business lobbyists or any special interests or any citizen lobbyists. So they finally had to register, which I think is a very good thing. So we know who they are because, of course, they're always lobbying, lobbying for more government and more money. <laughs> so you, there's also some very big special interests up in the, the Capitol. What are some of those? Well, of course, we have the Teachers Union, uh, the Nevada Education Association, which I don't think has anything to do with education. It has everything to do with more money for education. But what we need in Nevada being the 50th uh, in the nation, I mean, 50th in the nation. Uh, I think it's child abuse to put a child in the government schools. But uh, they lobby for more money for schools. We need fundamental reform in education. We need choice in education. We need things like phonics and basic reading. We need um, world-class standards, which are available online, but instead we've adopted Common Core. So that's one of the big ones. The unions are also a very big special interest. The casinos are another one. And so there are many special interests and, at the legislature. Mining, here, of course. mining would be, but they don't get quite as involved in as many of those issues as yeah. the others. A lot of our tax dollars used to come from both mining and from the entertainment industry, which is the gambling industry. Uh -huh. I don't think it comes as much from well, in uh, 2015, uh, we passed the largest tax increase in Nevada history. That was because the Republicans supported that tax. Uh, my my uh, opponent, uh, who is a Republican, Michael Roberson. What his name? And you've got a Democrat too, which is Kate Marshall. Yeah, Kate Marshall. But Michael Roberson was the president of the Senate at the time, and they, he shepherded through the largest tax increase in Nevada history, uh, which was the commerce tax. And I think it's very sad that the first time in 38 years we had a Republican Senate and a Republican Assembly, they passed the largest tax increase in Nevada history. I testified against it. I am opposed to additional taxes. This year, I am very concerned about the massive property tax they passed last session, which is a constitutional amendment, SJR 14, and they have to pass it in 2019, and then it'll go on the ballot. But Every county commission through the Nevada Association of Counties supported that. And the hearing, the first hearing was at nine o'clock at night. Um, nobody really knew what it was about. It's a, really a stealth tax that's going through the legislature. It'll double or triple your property taxes. It's gonna be devastating to everybody. Yeah, you know, I, I gagged. When I, I escaped California, after I got out of the military, I said, I'm not gonna go back to my own state. And, and I gagged when I saw that, yeah. 250. I mean, it really gagged, and it took Republicans to do it, which amazes me. Republicans do more damage than Democrats could ever think of doing. I saw it in California, and right. then the Democrats take over, of course, and destroy. But I could tell, I, I wish you were a Republican. I'm a Republican, but I, I do believe I wish your values, because the values of your party are very similar to what the Republican values are. Yes, we Written. believe in the Constitution. We believe in family values. The problem is, when Republicans get elected, that like Mike Roberson, then what do they do? They give us the largest tax increase in Nevada yeah. history, and then, for the first time in years, we had the chance to pass uh, parental notification, just notification on abortion. Uh, they have to have their parents uh, notified if they're gonna have an aspirin at school, but they can get an abortion, and they aren't even notified. Michael Roberson blocked that at the state legislature. Uh, they passed it in the assembly, and he didn't even allow it to have a hearing in the state senate. It, it's really tragic for our parents. Well, this is one of the things that undermines parental rights. Yeah. So you hadn't seen this, and under fair use, um, Michael Roberson has a commercial going on in the morning. I've seen it twice. And I happen to have a copy here, so I'm gonna let you watch this and we'll show the, the folks at home what this commercial is about, and tell me what you think about this commercial. Uh, led the effort to pass the largest increase in education spending in Nevada history and actually reduce class sizes in our schools. Michael Roberson, the only candidate who passed the first ever legislative gift ban. Michael Roberson. Michael wrote the bill cracking down on drug companies, overcharging for prescription drugs, and expanded health care for every woman in Nevada. That's why we support Michael Roberson. Michael Roberson for Lieutenant Governor. So it's all women talking about your opponent and why they support him. What do you think of that? Well, uh, the money for schools is being wasted. We're 50th in the nation. This is a disgrace. Uh, and so this money for schools is not helping our children. And what we need is fundamental reform. We need world-class standards, as I said, not 
Common Core. So you can pour all the money you want uh, into education, but until you're really teaching children how to read, how to write, how to think, how to do math, it doesn't make any difference. Common Core is a failed system. If you rated it, it would probably be a D. When we had experts come and speak in Nevada on Common Core, they said they had um, literacy programs that were free. They had developed them in Massachusetts, math programs from California. There are things available. This is, um, more money for education isn't the answer. We have to do something else. Nevada schools are failing. They're failing our children. They're failing taxpayers. They're failing our state. I would say to the South even more so. Um, Reno High School is where my daughters go. I'm, I'm totally educated teacher. But uh, there's other teacher. schools in Reno Sparks that are also failing. But everywhere in the state, there are schools which are not educating our children. I think it's child abuse to put a child through 12 years of school and they can't function and get a job. No. This is devastating to them. You've destroyed their lives. Yeah, very, very true. So anyway, he's got this commercial out. Um, oh, he talks about gifts. You know, you can't even, I can't even give a legislator now a copy of the Constitution. Yeah, it's ridiculous. You can't even give a legislator a calendar uh, it, it's it's bizarre, and so uh, I think that that gift, uh, the anti gift package he pla he promoted was was ridiculous. You know, the state's supposed to be about freedom and liberty. The state less so in California, and, and, but we do have some very restricted rules, especially on some even industries. I I'm in the uh, real estate business, and we've come out of the building industry, and it's very restrictive here in a lot of ways. Yes, I well, mean, they, there's more, there's, uh, they do have some crazy restrictions. There's government small here in, per se, but they still have some crazy things. Yeah, well, that was a, a window dressing yeah. issue, if anything else. It's just gone beyond the point. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it, within limits. Um, yeah, it is crazy. Yeah. I mean, you don't, you don't, that, what's the special interest really control the state through their donations and support of candidates and getting them elected. That's right. A $2 constitution given yeah. to somebody isn't going to buy their vote. It's ridiculous. No, no it really so, hurts the small person just trying to meet them, talk to them, or take them to right. coffee. You should be able to take somebody to coffee. That's you, insane. You can't. That, that's government controlling to the nth degree of yeah, control. It is. And wh so. what really happens is that in their, as you said, their campaign donations, that's where all the money yeah. comes from. So how do we take Robertson's rule that he made about not even be able to get, buy a cup of coffee and put some common sense into it. Well, you have to have a legislator willing to bring forth a bill to do that. And yeah. I suspect there won't be anybody willing to do it because then they'll be seen as taking, uh, wanting to but take not, favors. No. So I don't know that it'll ever happen. But it's not, it's not, not at all. It's just common sense. It is common I sense, think common but sense that's can something actually that's win. often lacking at the legislature. Yeah. I wouldn't say they're high so, on common sense. So tell me about your campaign. Um, and we've got a couple more minutes left. I think I know where you're running because you believe in what you're doing, but it's very difficult for anybody who's not a, um, either Republican or Democrat to get elected anywhere. Well, I, I tell you the main reason I'm running. There's two main reasons, but I was so concerned about this massive property tax that was passed and nobody knew about it. I've spoken all over the state in every corner and nobody knows about this massive property tax. If I'm not a candidate, nobody cares about my opinion. So I've used the opportunity to run for Lieutenant Governor, which is the President of the Senate and serves on the Economic and Tourism Boards, to tell people, look, if we have more taxes, that's really gonna hurt the economy of our state. Uh, we used to be known as a low tax state, no more, not after Roberson, and so, this is an opportunity for me to go everywhere, Winnemucca, Las Vegas, Reno, Carson, D Dayton, wherever I go, and tell people about this massive property tax increase. And they want to know, and they've been signing up. Uh, we have a website that's Coalition to Stop SJR 14. That's the Coalition to Stop SJR 14. They can go there and sign up. And then during the next session of the legislature, we will let them know when this bill comes up. It was incredibly important to me to use this opportunity to let people know. In addition, we need to have people challenging people in the Republican Party, like Michael Roberson, who have completely abandoned their principles and remind them that we need to abide by the Constitution. We believe in less government in the Independent American Party. You can see our platform online, 
less government, individual responsibility, family values, uh, we support the Constitution. We want the constitutional values pervading our state. And I think that hasn't happened. And we're a reminder and a voice, maybe crying in the wilderness, but somebody's got to tell the truth. The truth is powerful. We need to say, look, these are the values that made America great. These are the values that gave us liberty. These are the values that have made us prosperous. And we're abandoning them. Whether they're Republicans or Democrats, many of them are doing it. And so they need to be challenged. And that's what I'm doing. I'm challenging them because they are not following the constitutional principles by our founding fathers. And they are not leading us toward prosperity and liberty. But they're leading us to, to uh, enslavement by the government. Do you know the average person pays between 50 and 60% of their income in federal, state, and local taxes. And most of that is hidden taxes. And we just can't bear to have any more taxes. That's more than we pay in housing, in education, in healthcare, and transportation. It's more than we pay in anything. Yeah. And so we are being destroyed by the government and enslaved by taxation. And that's the biggest, uh, the biggest threat to the family. Because of economic problems, families disintegrate. This is a family value. Taxes are a family issue. Well, I, there's no doubt. I, I can't argue those. And as far as I know, those are all Republican principles. That's what's said. Yes, they should be. They yes. are, but they and are. So, you just find that in the platforms. That's right. But what we're, we're reminding all of you of is come back to where you came from. Yeah. If, you were, if Republicans were abiding by those principles, the independent American party wouldn't exist because there wouldn't be a need for it. But because Republicans give us the largest tax increase in Nevada history, they stop parental notification on abortion, they perpetrate more and more and more government, there has to be somebody out there saying, stop! <laughs> Very good, Janine. So what we always ask, if we're on Elko, Elko oh, yes. where do we eat? Well, the famous place in Elko to eat is the Star Basque Restaurant, and they serve family style and you'll never get a bigger steak. So <laughs> Sounds good. it's a great place to go, and that's where everybody, if they haven't been there, they need to go in Elko. And it must be local out there. They must have steak. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you I know, mean, it, 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 uh, Elko used to be the third largest cattle county in the nation. No more because of the BLM, but it used to be. Very good. Well, thank you. I appreciate thank it. You. Have a safe trip home. Thank you. It's campaigning. wonderful to be here. I appreciate the interview. And Maybe after the campaign next year, some cycle, you can we'll bring you back on. You can explain more about the process down at the state capitol. That sounds very, what you teach, that sounds oh, very Oh, yes, I'd love to do that. And it's simple, yeah. and people can get involved. It is, it is here. Well, thank you. Thank you. That's good. Hi, this is Bill, and thank you for listening to this episode of Timelines. If you could go right here and subscribe on YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube, of course, and watch a few more movies over here. And if you're listening to it on iTunes, go ahead and subscribe. Appreciate it very much, rating and review. Till next time, take care and always make it a great day.